Gloria a Dios, Dios bendiga la hermana Janelle por esta hermosa alabanza y queremos decirles hermanos que uh, como había dicho hace, hace momento es que en dos semanas vamos a reabrir el templo Sion en dos semanas, o sea el, el, el 14 de, de junio con la ayuda de Dios estaremos ahí celebrando Hermano, uh, hermanos, a uh, un hermoso culto para la gloria de Dios. Eh, en la semana que viene, el domingo que viene, les vamos a dar uh, las normas, uh, las guías que tenemos que seguir porque el gobierno nos ha dado un protocolo que tenemos que seguir. Por ejemplo, eh, el templo se tiene que desinfectar, etcétera, etcétera. Entonces, el domingo que viene le vamos a dar las guías y las normas que tenemos que seguir para que todo, hermanos, todo trabaje bien y sobre todo para que obedezcamos a las autoridades gubernamentales. Amén. En, en este día les voy a dejar un pensamiento que nos habla acerca del agradecimiento. Nosotros los hijos de Dios debemos ser gente agradecida. Y por eso leyendo eh, en primera de Tesalonicenses 5, 18 dice, dad gracias en todo porque esta es la voluntad de Dios para con vosotros en Cristo Jesús. Si miramos en la palabra de Dios, cuando vemos hermanos la actitud y la postura de Israel, que ellos nunca mostraron el agradecimiento, el aprecio a nuestro Dios. A pesar de que Dios los sacó de la esclavitud, de la miseria, de la insignificancia, ellos nunca mostraron el agradecimiento a Dios y Dios se queja. En, en uno de los escritos, hermanos, Dios se queja de que, Dios, que, que el pueblo nunca había mostrado agradecimiento a Dios. Y... Una de las cosas que miramos es que eh, eh, Dios sacó a Israel de la servidumbre, sacó a Israel, hermanos, de la pobreza, de la idolatría y los convirtió en su pueblo santo, en sus hijos, sus ovejas, su especial tesoro, sus escogidos. Pero a pesar de todo ello, hermanos, Israel lo único que hacía era quejarse ante la presencia de Dios. Y su comentario de ellos era, ¿verdad? ¿Por qué nos tra hiciste traer de Egipto? ¿Por qué nos sacaste de Egipto? ¿Por qué nos trajiste a este desierto para morir aquí? En vez de que ellos deberían de expresar, verbalizar sus palabras diciéndole al Señor, Señor, gracias porque nos sacaste de Egipto donde éramos unos esclavos. Gracias, Señor, porque nos has proveído de sustento. Gracias, Señor, porque nos has defendido nuestros enemigos. Aleluya. Y por eso Moisés... En el, en, en, en el libro de Deuteronomio, ¿verdad? Él les dice esto, así pagáis a Jehová, pueblo loco e ignorante. No es él tu padre que te creó, él te, él te hizo y te estableció. Y Dios se queja de Israel en Romanos 10, 21, cuando dice, pero acerca de Israel, dice, todo el día extendí mis manos a un pueblo rebelde y contradictor. ¿Qué, qué triste es esto, que nosotros, hermanos, podemos analizar la historia de Israel y podemos ver, hermanos, cómo Israel nunca apreció lo que Dios había hecho con él, ¿verdad? Y, pero cuando miramos, hermanos, a, a, al apóstol Pablo, miramos en la manera que él le da gracias a Dios, él, él sí apreció lo que Dios había hecho con él. Y en 1 Timoteo 1.12 dice, doy gracias. ¿Ven cómo empieza ahí el texto? Doy gracias al que me fortaleció, a Cristo Jesús nuestro Señor, porque me tuvo por fiel poniéndome en el ministerio. Habiendo yo sido antes blasfemo, perseguidor, injuriador, mas fui recibido a misericordia porque lo hice por ignorancia. 
en incredulidad. Pero la gracia de nuestro Señor Jesucristo fue más abundante con la fe y el amor que es en Cristo Jesús. Pablo sí se acordaba de dónde el Señor lo había sacado. Pablo se acordaba que él se jactaba de haber sido un gran fariseo, un hombre celoso de la ley de Moisés. Aleluya, pero cuando él se dio cuenta que él estaba en, la, en, en el error, en la en, en, eh, verdad, creyendo las cosas que no estaban de acuerdo, ¿verdad?, a la ley de Dios. Entonces, él, cuando el Señor Jesucristo se revela a él, Pablo reconoce que estaba mal. Pablo reconoce, ¿verdad?, que el Señor Jesucristo era el mismo Dios, el mismo Creador. Y todo lo que él hace es alabar a Dios, darle la honra y la gloria, porque Dios lo había sacado, hermanos, de el error. Y por eso, Después a Pablo lo miramos, hermanos, ¿verdad? Un hombre de fe, un hombre positivo, lleno de optimismo. Qué hermoso es que nosotros seamos optimistas, porque somos hijos de Dios y que no miremos las cosas de una manera negativa. Siempre, hermanos, hay que nosotros expresar gracias a Dios estemos como estemos, pase lo que pase, hay que levantar las manos y darle la honra y la gloria a Dios porque somos hijos de Dios, somos ovejas de su prado, somos el pueblo santo de Dios y es lo que Pablo tenía, era un hombre hermanos, aleluya, que de él se derramaba el gozo con la forma que le decía a la iglesia de Filipos, ¿Verdad? Regocijaos en el Señor. Otra vez os digo, regocijaos en el Señor. ¿Por qué? Porque él apreciaba lo que el Señor Jesucristo había hecho en su vida. Nosotros los hijos de Dios, en nosotros debe de haber ese agradecimiento. Y todos los días darle gracias a Dios. Aún cuando no sintamos darle gracias a Dios, hay que levantar las manos y darle decir al Señor, gracias, 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 porque soy tu hijo. Y veremos en la vida de Pablo, hermanos, que él, a través de su gozo, a través, hermanos, del agradecimiento que había él, él impactó la vida de miles Miles de personas para una vida mejor, llevándolos hacia la salvación y la vida eterna. Es lo que nosotros debemos de hacer, que la gente mire en nosotros algo diferente. Que la gente mire en nosotros cierto, ¿verdad?, optimismo. Aleluya, que la gente se dé cuenta que nosotros no nos de, debemos dejar llevar, hermanos, por las situaciones tan precarias que, por las cuales estamos atravesando, sino que ellos miren a Dios a través de nuestra vida. Hermanos, no miramos a Pablo lleno de amargura o de pesimismo. No, al contrario, él aconseja en contra de la amargura. En Efesios 4.31 dice, quítese de vosotros toda amargura, enojo, ira, gritería y maledicencia y toda malicia. En Hebreos 12.15 nos dice la palabra de Dios, ¿verdad? De que, que, que la amargura que puede haber en nosotros nos puede estorbar en el servicio de Dios. Hermanos, en nuestros corazones debe de haber muchísimo agradecimiento por todo lo que Dios ha hecho en nuestras vidas. Quiero que en esta mañana se pregunte, ¿en dónde estaba usted cuando encontró al Señor Jesucristo? ¿En qué situación se encontraba? Aleluya, ¿por qué, por, 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 por qué era lo que usted atravesaba, atravesaba cuando el Señor Jesucristo lo alcanzó? El Señor Jesucristo lo persiguió, lo alcanzó, hermanos, basado en su misericordia. Quiero que se acuerde y piense, analice, aleluya, y, y que su postura sea una postura de agradecimiento y alabanza a Dios. Es lo que Pablo le dice a los Efesios, en Efesios 1, 3 al 7, dice, bendito sea el Dios y Padre de nuestro Señor Jesucristo que nos bendijo con toda bendición 
espiritual en lugares celestiales en Cristo, según nos escogió en él antes de la fundación del mundo, para que fuésemos santos y sin mancha delante de en él. En amor, habiéndonos predestinado para ser adoptados hijos suyos por medio de Jesucristo, según el puro afecto de su voluntad, para la alabanza de la gloria de su gracia, en que tenemos redención por su sangre, perdón de pecados, según las riquezas de su gracia. Qué hermoso lo que dice aquí. Aquí estoy diciendo que el Señor Jesucristo nos escogió antes de la fundación del mundo. Esto está tremendo. Antes de que usted naciera, el Señor Jesucristo yo lo había escogido para ser hijo de él. Antes, antes que él, hermanos, hiciera el sol, la luna y, y las estrellas, el Señor Jesucristo, él ya nos había escogido para que fuéramos hijos de él. Al Señor sea la honra y la gloria. Y David, a, a, eh, hermanos, él sabía acerca de donde el Señor Jesucristo, donde Dios lo había sacado y él mismo se animaba, se animaba a que su corazón siempre estuviera agradecido. David era de carne y hueso igual que nosotros. Él, él experimentó la tristeza, la depresión. Él experimentó, hermanos, pensamientos negativos y a veces como que no se tenía ganas de alabar a Dios. A veces como que él, ¿verdad? La presión de la persecución que él experimentaba por Saúl, quien lo odiaba porque le tenía envidia. Aleluya. Él, de todas maneras, él mismo, hermanos, él mismo se animaba para alabar a Dios. Y en el Salmo 103 dice, bendice alma mía Jehová y bendiga todo mi ser su santo nombre. Bendice alma mía Jehová y no olvides ninguno de sus beneficios. Ahí está. Tenemos nosotros que enumerar los beneficios que hemos recibido de parte de Dios. Tenemos que hacer un inventario de las bendiciones que Dios nos ha dado. La bendición más, más hermosa cuando yo hablo con mi esposa. Y hermanos, hablamos a Dios porque nuestros hijos le sirven a Dios, nuestros nietos. ¿Verdad? Y eso es algo hermoso, es algo grande. Hermano, lo que Dios nos ha dado, lo que Dios nos ha dado, hermano, no es material, sino espiritual. Y lo hermoso, hermanos, es que tenemos, somos gente especial, que tenemos una grande esperanza. Nuestra esperanza no está aquí en este mundo. Especialmente ahorita, hermanos, eh, podemos ver las, la, las potestades malignas. Hermanos, ¿verdad? De que... que ¿Verdad? Están haciendo toda este, esta destrucción en, todo, en 40 ciudades en Estados Unidos. Aleluya. Entonces, eh, en nuestro, hermanos, nuestro anhelo, nuestro deseo no, no es en esta tierra, no. El Señor Jesucristo, Él tiene para nosotros, para nosotros una patria celestial que no se puede comparar con nada de este mundo. Esa esperanza nos debe de alentar. Aleluya, debe inyectar a nosotros gozo, ánimo. Aleluya, aleluya, gloria a Dios para ser positivos y darle gracias a Dios. Y por eso decía, decía David, bendice alma mía Jehová y no olvides ninguno de sus beneficios. Él es quien perdona todas tus iniquidades. El que sana todas tus dolencias, el que rescata del hoyo tu vida, el que te corona de favores y misericordias, el que sacia de bien tu boca, de modo que tú rejuvenezcas como el águila. Hermanos, iglesia de Sion, tenemos que seguir adelante. Sabemos que ahorita, hermanos, la situación es muy difícil y muy precaria. ¿Verdad? De una de las cosas quiero decirles a ustedes que nosotros tenemos la protección divina. Dios nos cuida, Dios nos protege y por eso hay que alabarle, adorarle y ensalzarle. Ahora les voy a invitar a que se cierren sus ojos y vamos a hacer una oración. Hermanos, ¿verdad? Imitar la presencia de Dios y, y orar por toda la iglesia. Señor Padre Celestial, 
A esta hora te doy toda la honra, toda la gloria, toda la, toda la alabanza. Señor, te doy gracias porque tu, porque tu palabra siempre es alivio. Tu palabra siempre, Señor, nos trae el aliento, el gozo, la paz, la tranquilidad. Gracias por tu, por tu, por tu palabra. Y que cada miembro de la iglesia de Sion sea una persona agradecida. Porque la persona agradecida va a ser feliz. Porque la persona agradecida va a ser positiva. Aleluya, va a estar llena de optimismo. Que en nosotros, Señor, siempre, aleluya, haya gratitud. Porque has hecho grandes cosas en nuestras vidas. Gracias. Gracias, gracias por todo lo que has hecho en nuestras vidas. Gracias por nuestras familias. Gracias por nuestra salud. Gracias por cada una de tus bendiciones. Y gracias, Señor, porque nos has dado una esperanza muy grande que algún día estaremos juntamente contigo. Ahora te pido, Señor, por los enfermos, el hermano Vargas, Señor que se encuentra muy enfermo, ten misericordia de él. Por cada uno de los enfermos, nuestra hermana, aleluya, Leti León, Señor que está recuperando, nuestra hermana María Reyes, también, aleluya, por todos los enfermos. Te pido, Señor, en el nombre del Señor Jesucristo, que tú borres, que quites todo pesimismo, todo estrés, aleluya, todos los sentimientos negativos que en tu iglesia puede haber por la situación por la cual estamos, que tú bendiga, Señor, a tu iglesia, a nuestros hijos, los juniors, los jóvenes, las dorcas, las madres solteras, las viudas, que tú bendiga hasta toda esta hermosa congregación, que nos prepare, Señora, para poder reabrir el templo. Aleluya, nos vamos a reunirnos una vez más para alabar y glorificar tu nombre. Te pido que nos bendigas, que nos ayudes. Señor, aleluya. Y que tu iglesia siga adelante. En el nombre de Cristo Jesús. Hermanos, a, a Iglesia de Sion, les agradezco por su contribución eh, en la economía, por sus oraciones. Hemos estado celebrando estas cadenas de oración cada fin de semana. Han sido de muchísima bendición. Gracias a todos ustedes que han participado. Y también, hermanos, les, les suplico, les pido, hermanos, que oremos. Tenemos que invitar la presencia de Dios, aleluya, para que, para que la oración, el poder de Dios pueda contrarrestar a toda potestad maligna, hermanos, que nos rodea. En el nombre del Señor Jesucristo, hermanos, Dios les bendiga, Dios les guarde. Amen. God bless our pastor, and, and we're really, really excited about the news that we received a little while ago that we're going to be together again at church very very shortly i want to thank the lord for all he's done for me and my family i want to thank the lord for everyone who has been united and in, in giving and united in in prayer the last few weeks as the pastor has asked us we've been asking the young people to unite in prayer as well and we haven't had any weeks where we've had open slots for prayer throughout the night so i want to thank young people for stepping up and being a part of that and god is so good And we are excited about those that are graduating as well, those that are going on to the next level in their education, uh, the journey of education. Congratulations to those that are, are graduating or celebrating their, their journey of high school that's over in college. And those that have received, uh, even, even the, the kids as well, those who have finished their kindergarten and elementary journeys as well. I know that uh, it's a big deal for, for them and a big deal for all of us. At this time, we're going to go ahead and get right into the Word of God. In English, I just have a very simple thought, and I'm going to ask you to just pray for me quickly that God would, would speak His Word and would do His will today. Lord God, we come before you, and we thank you for your Word. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your presence. Thank you for all that you've done for us. I just pray, Lord, that this Word, Lord, that you've given me, Lord, would be something that, that, that makes a difference in our lives and that echoes, Lord, into, Lord, every part of, of our lives, Lord, in the way that we witness the way that we pray the way that we see the world the way that we expect my god you to move the way lord jesus that we look at the future we ask that you make an impact in our lives and just let me pray amen i had a couple thoughts that i wrote down that i want to share with you all today 
But as you look at the word of God, it's always been God's will that he would lead his people. The Bible says that he desired to lead them and guide them. And in the Old Testament, we see that he used prophets and judges to go ahead of his people and to maintain order and, and worship. But the Bible says there came a time where the people wanted something else. They wanted to be like the other nations. So they cried out for a king who would lead them. The Bible says that Samuel took to the heart and he cried and he asked God. He just cried and asked God to hear his prayers. And the Bible says, says that, that God told Samuel, they haven't rejected me, you, but they rejected me. And the Bible says, so they went ahead and, and chose, or God went ahead and chose a king. It started off okay. The Bible says that after a, a short time, we see the flaws in this king. And after Saul, there would be many kings. David stood out and he did uh, at times a, a, a good job of leading people, but he was imperfect. But if you look at all the kings that led Israel, and there were many, if you follow the whole story, you realize that all these men made mistakes. All these men fell short. Some kings tried and to do the right thing and to serve righteously, but they fell short. Others only served themselves. All these kings failed to reach perfection in the way they led others. There were some kings that were greedy. There were others that were unengaged. There were others that were narcissistic. Some had short tempers. Some kings fell into the worship of idols. The people often suffered because of the choices their kings made. But this was a choice they made. They wanted a man to lead them instead of God. And when we look at our times today, when we look at our country, when we look at our world, our systems of governments, if we look at city, county, state, and federal governments, we have been helped by certain decisions and actions and laws, but we've also had setbacks because of other decisions, actions, and laws. And if we listen to the voices and look at what's happening around us, we would agree that our country and our world is eroding as we speak. People, some people are crying out because they are asking for their idea of justice. Some people are speaking of inequality. Some people are, are saying how much they hate leadership. There are some who blame society at its core. They believe, they believe that evil, uh, it can be seen through greed, through power, it, um, through a power-hungry leadership. Some people want to point out racism as the cause for our society's evils. And people are saying they want change. People are saying that they will force change to happen. And if we are honest with ourselves, we would agree that this world does need some kind of change. We would agree that there are some things that need to be made new again. If you looked at your phone yesterday, or you looked at the news the last few days, you could see a lot of things that were happening that were senseless acts of violence. And at first it started in one state and you thought, oh my God, may God be with that state. Then you would see it get a little closer. And then even last night, in cities around us, it started happening a little too close to home. And we would have to be honest if, if, if someone asked if, if we were at times a little scared, especially when you think of your own family and you think of your own friends and you think of those that were, were innocent that had nothing to do with these, these, these protests and riots that were dragged into the skirmishes. And it can be a little unnerving and it can be a little scary when you think that, we're, that there were innocent children that were caught up in this, or police officers, or people that were just walking by that were caught up in the rage of others. There were thieves that were stealing and victimizing others. And yes, there were some people that were out there protesting and trying to do the right thing. But if you look at the actions of the world around us, you will see that the things that are reigning our hatred, our greed, our violence, our lies, our pride, they, these things are all real. These things are all around us and they are manifesting themselves in a very real way. And people say they want change. Some people are even, to destroy, are, are even um, willing to destroy property to show how angry they are. 
But friends, brothers and sisters, we don't need more laws. We don't need more rules. We don't need to try to force others to respect a certain way of life or to respect a certain race. We don't need a new medical vaccine for change. We don't need a poster that will create lasting hope. The one thing that you and I need, the one thing that this world needs is Jesus. We need Jesus. The only movement that can create love is not one that is a political movement. The only movement that can create change and hope and eternal rest is the Holy Spirit. You can try all you want to. You can try to yell. You can try to scream. You can even try to burn walls down. But the only way, the only path to change and to a changed heart is Jesus. The only action that will bring love is repentance. America, the society around the world, the friends and the family around us, the churches even, we need to look in the mirror and ask ourselves what kingdom we are living in and what kingdom we are waiting on. I hear so many Christians just criticizing our government, which is fine. You can criticize government if you want to. You can criticize your politicians if you want to. But man cannot bring change. Man cannot bring change renewal to a spiritual heart. A law can't make me love you. A law can't change the way you see me. There is nothing that can change us except the spirit of the living God. And there where you are, you have to allow God to change your heart, your mind, your soul, the way that you think, the way that you act, the way that you behave. Because if we try to wait for man to do something for us, we are going to be waiting until we are dead. We have to wait on God. We have to stop waiting on a man or an earthly kingdom, and we have to start looking to our heavenly kingdom. No military war can truly bring, bring peace. Only our King Jesus will be able to offer us peace for all eternity. If you believe in Jesus already, friend, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, then you and I cannot expect too much of our governments. Amen. We can't expect for our governments to fix everything in society because that's not what the word of God says will happen. I'm going to ask you to turn your Bibles really quickly to 2 Peter chapter 3. And we're going to read a couple verses. 2 Peter chapter 3 verses 11 through 13. And Peter speaks to his brethren in a way that it almost sounds like he's living in today's world. It sounds like he's here still. In the flesh, we know he's not, but we know that he lives forever with the Lord Jesus Christ, and we're going to see him one day soon. But he says in Second Peter chapter 3, verse 11 through 13, Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives. That's what we're supposed to be doing right now, amen, as a church. We, we, should, we should want man to change, and we should want all those things, and that's good. But our main goal is is to live holy and godly lives. That's our goal right now. As you look toward or you as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming, that day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. Amen. That's what we're looking for. We're not looking for everything to be okay right now and everything to be perfect right now. We're looking for something that's going to happen in the future that's going to make everything perfect on heaven and earth. Friends, Jesus is the answer. This life is imperfect. This world is broken. Man's heart is wicked. There will always be injustice under man's rule. There will always be acts of hatred and violence and wickedness in its world new laws more rules and city governments cannot bring lasting change 
and I was, when I was praying and reading the word of God, I had a funny thought. You know, trying to change man's heart through laws and rules is like trying to plug a million leaks in a sinking boat. You're not, you can't do it. You can't plug those leaks. You cannot make new rules. That boat's going to sink without Jesus. Our king will return. He will make all things new. But until then, we must be renewed daily. We need him in order to be filled with something new. We need him in order to see true justice. As sinners, we need him in order to deal with our sins because we know we deserve death. We have committed crimes against man, but always, mostly, I should say, mostly against God. We all need him. We all need his perfection. Our king is Jesus, and he is just. And I want to finish reading something out of Isaiah chapter 9 today. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 through 7. And it's speaking about who Jesus is and what he's going to do. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. That's who our Jesus is to us. He is all those things and so much more. And look at what he's going to do. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. So he's going to rule in a perfect way. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, in order to and in, in order it and establish, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. A new day is coming. A new leadership is coming. A new leader is coming. Perfection is coming. Justice is coming. But it's not coming in this world. It's not coming through the, the ballot box where you and I are going to vote soon. Justice, peace, truth, rest, love, change, they're all coming. But they're not coming here, and they're not coming in the way that you want it to, perhaps. But they're coming from heaven. There's a perfect kingdom coming with a perfect king ruling. That is our hope. That is what we are waiting for. Our politicians are always going to let us down. Our governments are always going to fail. Society without Christ will continue to fall apart. Laws will always fall short, will always fall short. But today, we can be at rest. Today, you and I can sleep well. Today, you and I can have peace and joy and love in our hearts for all mankind. If we would just get close to the Lord Jesus Christ, if we would just draw near to him, if we would just call him, hallelujah, by his name, Jesus, if we would just say, Lord, be the master of my life, be the savior of my soul, be the guide of my future, my destiny, my eternal destiny, if you would say that today, you can start seeing change in your life but if you want to wait on man you can go ahead and do that if you want to wait on a God that's never going to let you down today is a day where you can be at rest today you can be at peace today your soul can be satisfied this world needs Jesus oh how we need Jesus I'm going to ask you to lift up your hands right now I'm going to ask you to call on the name of Jesus I'm going to ask you right now to call on his name in a tender way, in a longing way, in a way that you desire him more deeply than anything and anyone else. And I want you to just pray with me right now. Jesus, Lord God, our Lord condition, our society's condition is not, Lord God, hidden from you. You see all things, you know all things, and you know how desperately, Lord, this world needs you. You know, Lord God, and you see the destruction, my Father, but you also see the condition of every man's heart. And you see, my Father, Lord, how far he is from you. Oh, Lord, and I pray, Lord, for this man. I pray for that woman, Lord Jesus, that is so anxious because they have desperately been wanting to see perfection in this life. Perhaps, Lord, they've been hurt by decisions they've made. Perhaps they've been hurt, hurt, Lord, by decisions of other people. But, Lord, I know they are hurt. I know that they are suffering. I know, my God, that they're acting this way because they need you. Lord, I can't force anyone to change by my actions. 
Only you can change them, Lord. Only you, Lord, can make them new again. And I pray, Lord, that they would humble themselves at the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, they would open the door of their lives to you, Lord, and that they would be made new again. I pray also, Lord Jesus, that my brother and my sister would have boldness, my God, to say these words simply. You, my friend, need Jesus. You, my neighbor, need Jesus. You, my friend, need his salvation. Only you, Lord Jesus, can change these people, Lord. We ask that you change them, that you save them, and that you give them rest. And we ask, my God, that you use us to carry this word, these simple words to those that are lost. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God is so good. And I thank you so much for being with us today. I praise the Lord. We are thankful to God for his word. Damos gracias al Señor por su palabra. Uh, we are reassured. The Bible says, Jesus said, the heavens and the earth shall pass away. But my word will never pass away. La palabra de Dios dice que los cielos y la tierra pasarán, pero mi palabra nunca pas pasará. So if his word will never pass away. Si su, su, su palabra nunca pasará. Entonces sus promesas nunca pasarán. His promises also will never pass away. And so the word of God also says that all of God's promises are yes in him. Todas las promesas que en, en Dios, en Él son sí, o, o, y, y son algo de certeza. God's promises are certain. And so what does that mean? That means that God is calling on us today to stand firm on His promises. Estar y permanecernos nosotros, hermanos, firmes en sus promesas. We know that God is with us. Sabemos que el Señor está con nosotros. Y si Él está con nosotros, ¿quién contra nosotros? If Jesus is with us, who can be against us? As we see the images of chaos unfold all around us, we can be sure and know that God is our victory. And as the, our youth pastor was just saying, uh, that we are, are emboldened and we are encouraged by the Holy Spirit to speak his truth to all mankind, to everyone around us. And what we need to do more than ever before, lo que nosotros, hermanos, tenemos que hacer más que nunca, es acercarnos a él, is to get a hold of him with all of our heart. And so the pastor wants to, once again, um, encourage the church. El pastor, una vez más, quiere exhortar a toda la iglesia que nosotros escogemos un día esta semana. Uh, para ayunar delante de Dios, para presentar un día y decir, Dios, tú es más importante de, de la comida que la comida que lava, y yo entrego este día ante usted. Lord, I present this day of fasting and prayer to you, because you're more important than the bread that I eat and the water that I drink. También, hermanos, vamos a seguir formando altares con nuestros hijos, con nuestras esposas. We're going to continue building altars with our families and bringing our children before the Lord. And when as we begin to um, get back to the normal, the new normal of our life, let's not let that go. Cuando nosotros, hermanos, uh, mientras estamos entrando una vez más al normal, no vamos a dejar de, de establecer y edificar altares ante de Cristo Jesús con nuestros hijos y nuestras familias. Entonces vamos a continuar orando con, con, con nuestras familias diariamente. Damos gracias al Señor por cada uno de ustedes que han dado ofrendas espirituales. We thank God for every one of you that are offering spiritual offerings to the Lord and fasting and in prayer. And we are also thankful to God for those of you that are giving with all of your heart. Damos a gracias, gracias a Cristo Jesús por todos ustedes hermanos que están dando de todo su corazón. Jesus said, give and it shall be given. El Señor dijo, dar y se os dará. En el mismo porción que nosotros damos al Señor, Él nos da abundantemente mucho más. God infinitely blesses us when we give, and we just want to continue to encourage you to give, um, because I know with all of my heart and all my soul um, that God is faithful and that His word is true. And I also know that God is going to bring us together um, with such a spirit of celebration. Sé, hermanos, que el Señor es fiel y sus promesas son verdades y vamos a estar en celebración 
en victoria, en ese espíritu de gozo. Amén. Why don't we just bow our heads today and pray, and we're going to present all of these things before the Lord. And in this prayer, we are going to encompass all those that have been victimized, those that are hurting, um, so that the people all around us and all around this world would come to the true peace, Jesus. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, Cristo Jesús, venimos ante, delante de tus pies una vez más. Danos a ti, Señor, toda la honra y toda la gloria. Tú eres verdad. You are the truth. Tú eres la luz, Señor, del mundo. Jesus, you are the light of the world. Gracias, Señor, porque tú nos hablas diariamente. You speak to us every single day. Nos llena de tu poder y tu presencia. You fill us with your power, Lord Jesus, and your spirit. Para declarar tus promesas. Declarar tu verdad a todo este mundo. To declare your promises to this world all around us. Presentamos, Señor, a los que, han, que son víctimas. Aleluya, aleluya, de todas las cosas, el caos, de la violencia que está ocurriendo en este país, en el nombre de Cristo Jesús, que estas personas, Señor, pueden venir delante de tus pies y pueden recibir tu salvación. Todos enfermos, que sean, aleluya, sanados, en el nombre de Cristo Jesús, we pray for all of the sick. Presentamos, Señor, a nuestros hermanos y hermanas en necesidad. Tú, Señor, Señor es el único que nos puede dar y proveer por cada necesidad. You are the only one, Jesus, that is able to provide for all of our needs as we present our brothers and sisters that are in need. We know that you are faithful. En el nombre de Cristo Jesús, te damos, Señor, toda la honra y toda la gloria. We give you, Jesus, all of the honor and all of the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And we're going to have a, a, week of, a week of victory in Jesus' name. Amen.